By now, you may have seen the amazing Metal Slug demo completely rewritten for the Atari ST. It's a great demonstration of the ST's hardware capabilities even after all these years. Now the demo has some particular hardware requirements, so I'm going to demonstrate those for both the Steam and Atari emulators. First, in Steam, I'm going to select a Mega ST. You can do just the ST, but you're going to have to select 4 megabytes because it's required. Anything less than that simply won't run. So let's go on to TOS. I'm going to select 2.06. As usual, you can select one of many, but 2.06 seems to work fine. Now in the Steam emulator on the video side, uh, of course, it has to be a color monitor. Now, if you run it like this, you're probably going to get some flickering. And I thought it was a video thing where I tried CRT emulation. And by the way, for those that are the old school, uh, you may want to do that. But that didn't really fix it. it just sort of hit it. Eventually, I figured out that the game was a little bit too demanding for the video emulator, and it couldn't draw uh, frames fast enough. So I went here to display and selected one out of two uh, to make sure it ran fine. Now, you may have to play with your system a little bit to get it to work correctly, uh, but it seemed like one out of every two is just fine. Now, on the Atari, you access the options by pressing the F12 key. And when you do that, you will go over here and click on the System button. And you'll see the same configurations. Mega ST over here. Okay. Uh, CPU is uh, down here. Here's memory for megabytes. So if I go back to the main menu and I go to the Hotari screen, uh, you'll see the same options for frame skip. And it cured the same problem. The flicker went away once I changed it from auto uh, to one. As a matter of fact, uh, here's a demo of it. You can see the uh, flashing on the screen. You hit the F12, go over to the Atari screen, change the frame skip, and go back to the game, and you'll see that it's gone. Now this game requires all four megabytes, so you can't have any accessories or anything else loaded up. Now in my emulator setup, you'll see that I have a 16-bit directory for the ST stuff. I go to emulators here, and you'll see a whole bunch of directories, including the Steam emulator, and the Atari emulator. You'll see here I also have a bunch of different drive configurations. So if we go back to the Steam emulator and we change the uh, drive for the hard drive and you come over here and you'll see that I have it pointed to the C drive there uh, and the, I have a D drive as well. But going back to my normal C drive you'll see that I have the accessories available, auto uh, programs, multi-boot, all the accessories down here as well, all available. But for this application, I'm going to use a bare one. It has nothing loaded, uh, no boot managers, no anything. So I'm going over here and I created uh, a copy of the C drive and then stripped it down to where all I have in here is some directories. I turned off these by renaming them, and all I have here are those directories. The CPX and GEMSYS aren't affected because they're not accessed, and there's no other accessories listed. And then I created a Metal Slug directory, dropped all the files in here uh, so they can run uh, from that directory. And with Atari, you just go F12, hard disks, and you browse and you select the bare drive right there. So once we have that configured, we can go ahead and start the emulator up and skip the memory test and all that. And when it comes up, uh, you'll see a desktop. Uh, hopefully in low resolution, or it can be medium, depends. Uh, you have your color monitor, and you're going to do your usual stuff. Now, I've already set it up here, uh, but let's go ahead and look at the C drive. This is that bare drive we saw in uh, the Metal Slug directory. And I simply browse down here till I get to the uh, program. Now, originally on this particular desktop, it, this wasn't a uh, Metal Slug program here. Oh, uh, here, let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, from the desktop. And then I'm simply going to drag the current program over here to the desktop to create a shortcut. Then, of course, I'm going to have to save this particular desktop so that uh, it will come up like this after I reboot. So as usual in uh, STU, save configuration, say OK, say save desktop. And now we have the Metal Slug program right on the desktop as soon as this drive boot. And then it's just a matter of double click on it. Now, it won't run until you press the space bar. Uh, so we just uh, have to do that, and they'll start loading, unpacking everything, and load it into the system memory, that 4 megabytes we talked about. And everything runs fine. It should get past the blank screen, and here you are uh, with the screen. 
Okay, now it's running, but I have to warn you, it's a pretty fast game. I'm a little slug is anyways, but this is like a little fast besides that. Unlike most ST programs or games, uh, they have joystick support. This does not natively support joysticks, so you're going to have to use a keyboard. I am going to be publishing a companion video that shows you how to map uh, shortcuts so that any joystick command can actually push a key for you. But in this case, as you can see, we have the WASD. Uh, you simply press those on your keyboard, and it moves left, right, and up and down, depending upon that. And the N key is your fire, and the B is your bombs, and the M key is your jump uh, button. Now, it may be because I'm just getting old, but this game is very difficult to play uh, on this particular demo because things move just so fast. With a little practice, I was able to uh, do okay. But let's talk about one more thing you can do to enhance this. So I put it back to the full screen to show you a couple of tweaks you can do. In Steam, because it's an emulator, you can do some things like the color control. If you click here on the menu and you change the brightness and contrast, you'll get actually a very good looking screen here as far as colors. So play around with those a bit until you get the results that you like. Now as far as speed, if you can't kill these guys, there's just too many things going on, can't get the helicopter or whatever, you can click up here on the speed and you can change the run of the emulator so it actually slows down uh, to where it's a more manageable speed for this particular demo. This is the first time I've ever had to use an adjustment on the Steam emulator. But in this particular case, I was able to slow it down to a place where uh, I could actually uh, fight effectively and uh, blow up a couple helicopters. One thing I forgot to mention about gameplay, if you uh, get to zero lives, it's automatically replenished. You can live over and over again, uh, no matter how many times you die. The same thing goes with bombs as well. So there you have it, how to set up the Steam or Atari emulators to run the Metal Slug demo. I uh, hope you enjoy it and have lots of fun. Go ahead and post a comment, uh, especially if you have completed it, because I haven't as of uh, this video. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want more, you can just click on subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. The links are in the description of the video.